Hey, what up everyone? Corey Taylor here from Stone Sour, and you are watching Livewire. Or Loudwire. Oh. Fuck <laughs> One more, shit bag, cock sucking, <laughs> fucking shag BD. Hey, what up everyone? Corey Taylor here, and you are watching Loudwire. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Gruhamid here from Loudwire, and as you can see, I'm sitting next to Corey Taylor, of course of Slipknot, but right now he's here with Stone Sour on his very lovely tour with Papa Roach. Hmm. Thank you so much for your time. No worries. Uh, I'm very happy to meet you finally because I wanted to tell you that I feel like you're the Samuel L. Jackson of metal. All right. Because... All right. I love that. <laughs> and this is why, because <laughs> nobody in metal says motherfucker better than As you do. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> so, I'm a motherfucking master yeah. of it, so... Absolutely. <laughs> when, did, when did you uh, learn that you had that skill? Um... That's a great question. I got a. I almost got expelled in kindergarten for, for like <laughs> for real. Like thing. that's a true story. Like, yeah, my. Uh, uh, Cause and, and at the time, like I had no idea what these words were. I just heard them around the house and whatnot. And uh, you know, there was there was like the, you know when you're a kid. And at least this is the way I was growing up. That, that you'd get like all these weird rhymes and stuff. There was one that when I I swear to God when I was in kindergarten. Good. motherfucking titty asshole shitty and I just thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life so I would run around my neighborhood motherfucking titty asshole shitty this little gnarly six year old kid you know so uh, yeah my my uh, my love for these wonderfully woody words goes way back <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah, I'm and, sure it is. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, Stone Sour, you had released House of Golden Bones Part 1. Number 2 is coming very soon. Uh, how would you compare the two records? Um, well, you know, uh, Part 1 is a really, really great, like, heavy hard rock album. You know, it's got a lot of wonderful layers to it. And part 2, in a lot of ways, is, is darker, is heavier. Um, it, it's more complex. It, it's probably the most experimental we've ever been with our music, and uh, it it flows more like a soundtrack to a movie than it than than part one does. You know, because part one kind of sets the tone, and then part two just really finishes the story in a great way. It follows the narrative a lot more, and um, it just feels like some type of just like cinematic vibe, which was really kind of what we were going for. Yeah. And speaking of the the narrative, you've got the uh, graphic novels yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the artwork for it looks incredible. Yeah. I mean, uh, is there anything you can tell us about that, or a any other graphic novel you may be able to compare yours to? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, it, it's being released uh, in, in uh, like single trades uh, before before we do a graph like a graphic novel for it. Um, so it's a it's a four part miniseries that is coming out through Dark uh, Dark Horse Comics, and I mean honestly the only thing I can kind of compare it to would be something like if Neil Gaiman and Garth Ennis got together and and did a comic together you know like story wise you know I mean it's got it's got this very sci fi fantasy kind of vibe to it but at the, at the same time the characters are very gritty and. Uh, fairly realistic and there's some pretty good offensive language going on in there and some wonderfully uh descriptive metaphors uh but other than that man it just feels like a really good comic book you know i just got the uh i just got the illustrations back you know with, without the color and without the lettering and whatnot and i was so stoked man just from a fan point of view i was just like here's my comic and i ran around with my computer like showing it off like I'd, my son had just been born you know <laughs> So uh, yeah, I think it's gonna appeal to people who like you know like a really good story, like a mystery, you know, trying to you know piece together puzzles and whatnot. And I think it's just a great visual representation of the short story I wrote for the albums. Yeah, and uh, another part of the seemingly massive amount of things that Stone Sour is about to do, uh, I've read that you're planning to do a series of shows in yeah. 2014, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, one show you play part one, the other part two, uh, with some elaborate stage setup. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any ideas for that stage setup, and is there any possible way that it could outdo Slipknot's stage setup? That would be hard to do. I mean, <laughs> coming as a member of that other band, I mean, it's, you know, you, you, with, with Slipknot, you're guaranteed that anything we bring on stage could kill you <laughs> at any point, you know? So, um, 
with Stone Sour, you know, and, and there's really no competition with it. But with me, you know, tr- kind of trying to, you know, kind of put the things together and then getting these ideas out. My idea was to kind of borrow more from Roger Waters doing The Wall live than, you know, doing something like Slipknot, you know, because it's it's more thematic at the end of the day. And there'll be more things going on and there'll be moving pieces and and things that really kind of develop over the shows, you know. So to me, it was more about doing that and really almost treating it like a theater piece, you know, almost like a musical and and trying to engage the audience in a way that we never had before. Wow. And uh, you're about to release your second book. Yeah. Uh, I think people are excited for that. And I saw the working title was A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Heaven. Yeah. Is that still the, the working title? Oh, that's title? the working title. They made me write a subtext for it as well, which is very involved. <laughs> let's see if I have it here on my phone. It's, uh, <laughs> let's see. And it's right here. A funny thing happened on the way to heaven, or how I made peace with the paranormal and stigmatized zealots and cynics in the process. <laughs> Beautiful. So basically, I'm trying to piss off everyone at this point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I'm, I'm nearly done with it. Um, I, I got a few more weeks before I have to turn it in, and uh, it's going to be really cool. I just did the 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 photos for the book with uh, my good friend uh, Paul Brown, who did the photos for the last book, and. Uh, it's going to have a different uh, vibe to it, but it's kind of set up the same way, you know, where it's, it's, it's a discussion, you know, and it's me trying to figure out how, you know, how I can have this, this deep belief in, in the supernatural and the paranormal and whatnot like that. And yet I'm still a, a pretty vocal atheist, you know? So it's me trying to find an, a new way to, to figure out what these things are, you know, because I, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot in my life when it comes to this side of things. And I refuse to just write it off like a lot of, you know, cynics would. And, and, and I'm trying to, you know, kind of work it out from honestly, from a scientific and mathematical point of view. So there's a lot of that in the book. There's also a lot of, uh, um, stories, you know, that, of uh, the, the experiences I've seen, the places I've lived, um, the places I've worked. There's a whole chapter about the mansion in uh, in, oh, in Los Angeles, the Houdini Mansion, which is incorrect because not one person named Houdini ever lived there. But it's it's gotten that name because so many people. It's almost like the the game telephone. One person says one thing and it changes and changes and changes, and all of a sudden people call it the Houdini Mansion. They lived around the corner, actually. Not okay. no one by the name of Houdini lived in that mansion. So for me. A, I'm trying to kind of write that wrong, and B, it's just me, you know, kind of telling stories like that, and uh, you know, and and at the same time, you know, engaging it, and, you know, putting that argument out, kind of like what I did with Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, yeah. So, Houdini Mansion, someone take that off Wikipedia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>